I've defeated every single enemy in the Pikmin series, but that's only because I had the help of my trusty Pikmin. If you were to take that away, my boy Almar would have been dead by now. So like any normal person, I thought to myself, could I beat up a ball barb in a battle to the death? Suddenly, this idea grew a little too big and now here we are. This is my matchup chart. Each tier represents how likely it is for me to win each fight. But before we get into the ranks, we gotta establish the rules first. Now, canonically, I could win every single fight here, because most of the creatures on this list are no bigger than a couple inches. Literally just stomp on them and call it a day. But to make things a little more interesting, I'm gonna pretend I'm about the same size as Olimar, so most of the enemies on this list would be bigger than me. In terms of where I'll be fighting them, I'm just gonna assume we're both trapped in some ancient coliseum, because, I don't know, like, it's pretty cool. And if the enemy can only survive in the water, I'm going to give them the advantage and assume we're fighting in one of those Pokemon water arenas. So whoever I'm fighting can swim wherever they want, but I can at least hop from platform to platform. This fight will be a battle to the death. It'll strictly be a 1v1 unless the enemy resides in groups, or can spawn in other enemies to back them up. I will not be wielding any weapons, I can only use my body. However, I am able to use items or corpses that the enemy spawns in. But before we get into the list, let's talk about my stats as a fighter. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually a pretty active person. I go to the gym five times a week, and I train martial arts four times a week. I'm very capable of supporting my own body weight and use my agility to react quickly. A big disadvantage I have though is my weight. I'm not too heavy, so it won't take much to knock me down. And I'm also not used to fighting creatures. Before I start things off, this video was heavily inspired by Progius SP's tier list, where he basically does the exact same thing. Now that I think of it, it wasn't really inspired. I kind of just copied his idea. Sorry, Prod. But with everything out of the way, it's now time to finally get into the rankings. First up, we have the Albino Dwarf Ball Borb, and he'd be a little bit shorter than me, but you gotta keep in mind, that mouth is like the size of my arm. So all it takes is one chomp from a vital and I'm pretty much dead. However, these guys can be crushed by a single Pikmin. So as long as I take out their legs and jump on their back, it's an easy win for me. I think I'd have a slight advantage just for the fact that that mouth is freaking dangerous. And while we're at it, I'm going to put the Dwarf Ball Borb and Dwarf Ball Bear there too, because they pretty much do the exact same thing. Next up, we have this giant fucking dog, and let's be honest, I'm not winning this. I'm going to fucking die. Let's see how big this dog is real quick. So here's a picture of the dog, and this is Louie. And about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This dog is 14 times my size. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the rock. You are not beating the Ancient Sirehound. Moving on, the Anode Beetle, easy dub. Especially since it's a 1v1, he can't really latch on his electricity to anything else, so he'll just spark, wait for him to stop sparking, and then jump on his back and stomp him out. Easy dub. Next up, we have the Anode Dweevil, and I'm just gonna put all the Dweevils in together. As a human being with skin, flesh, and bones, elements don't really mesh well with me, so one hit from these guys, and I'm gonna get shocked, burned, frozen, frostbite, whatever. However, they're spiders with very thin legs, so once again, kick out the legs, they'll fall on their back, and then stomp on their head, and it's a pretty easy win. That being said, if I get one shock from them, I'll take a devastating hit. But since it's a battle to the death, I think I'd emerge victorious. And for the water, water doesn't do shit to me, so this is gonna be an easy dub. What's he gonna do, splash me? Oh no, I'm so scared. The Antenna Beetle! He is kind of passive. He doesn't hurt us at all. He kind of just like jams our radar. And granted, I'm not using any weapons, no phone, no electronics, no nothing. This will be an easy dub. It might be hard to catch him. I'm gonna have to chase him around the arena, but I think it'll be easy dub. The Arachnode is one of those situational enemies. He's a little too high up for me to get him and I can't really throw anything at him. So the only way for me to get him is for me to jump and reach and pull him off his, his little web thingy. But if I miss and he traps me in his webs, it's an easy game for me. So... I still think I will have the slight advantage. I think he'll be easier than the ball borbs, but harder than the Dweevils. So I'm going to put him at the top of whatever tier this is. The Arctic Cannon Beetle. All I got to do is run in circles, wait for his back to open, and kind of just like pound the shit out of it till he dies. But he is huge, and he could just walk over me. The snowballs aren't really scary, in my opinion. But the fact that he's like eight times my size is. That being said... If I have enough stamina to keep running around and keep hammering down at him, I can win. But if I get tired at one point, I'm gonna lose. I have a chance of winning, not too high of a chance. The Cannon Beetle Larvas are a very similar situation to the Arctic Cannon Beetle. All I gotta do is run around in circles and take them out. I think it'll be a pretty easy target to hit considering the fact that they're kind of stuck in their hole. I think I'd have the advantage here, 
but it will be harder than a ball board. The Aristocrab offspring is actually a pretty difficult enemy to take down. That claw is about the size of my head, so all it takes is one little snip snip and my limbs, liver, head even, it's chopped off, just like that. The fact that he's pretty armored up makes it even harder to deal with, so I think that he would easily kick my ass. This one's no question asked. The Armored Maudad will destroy me, even more than this Ancient Sirehound, because the Ancient Sirehound, I could at least hit. The Armored Maudad, I need rocks, I need like heavy machinery to get rid of this guy's armor, and I don't have that. I have my fists and my legs. So Armored Maudad, you will fuck me up. Baldi and Beating Long Legs are just two enemies that I can't deal with. The only thing I can think of is maybe climbing their legs. I've climbed a few trees in my past, but like, the trees never really moved or tried to stomp on me. I could just dodge the footsteps all day and try to climb up, but it'll be a very difficult task to actually make it to the middle. And plus, if I'm climbing up and then he shakes me off and I fall, that's a devastating fall. I could break a bone and then he'll stomp on me. Yeah, no, I don't think I'll win this. I do have a very, very slight chance of winning though. The Bearded Emperor is, I think, our first even matchup. On one hand, he has these electrical powers and these rat teeth and he'll chase you down, but if you manage to outrun him, you can take him out when he's kind of like recharging his electricity. That being said, he's a pretty fast enemy and I think he could take advantage of me if he really wanted to. The Blizzarding Blowhog is massive and I don't think I'm going to win this fight. I think he would kick my ass. Not as much as the Peckish Aristocrab, but I do think it'll be very hard to defeat him considering his pure size. The Bloomcap Boyster is pretty easy to beat actually. Slow, sluggish. It has these weird things coming out of its mouth, but once again, as long as you stay at the back and try to go for that cherry thing on its tail, I think it's an easy win. The Bog Swallow. One of those weird, ugly, looking ass enemies. You gotta stay away from these guys. You gotta be careful. Once again, like the larvas, they're stuck to one position, but instead of shooting things at you, they'll suck you in. I feel like that suck power they have is strong. It's probably like a giant vacuum, so if I get caught in that suck, I'm getting inhaled whole. However, if I manage to stay behind him, because he doesn't seem to be very fast when it comes to rotating, I think I could be able to take him. So I'm going to leave it at an even matchup. Breadbug! Breadbug, I will kill. I will easily kill you. He has no reason to hurt me at all. I will actually just obliterate this stupid fucking creature. And you know what? Same with the giant breadbug. He'll be a little harder because he's taller, but he's not hostile at all. He kind of just walks around and I'd feel bad beating him up actually, but like, I'd still do it. The Hermit Cromad is huge and you gotta target its eyes, which is very high up on its body and is right at the front of its face. So I don't think I'd be able to win this. Not in the slightest. Yeah, I'm fucking dead. The Bulbman is just a slightly bigger version of the Dwarf Bulborb, but, but he'll have the small Bulbman trailing him around. So if I try to attack him, he might use the other Bulbman to try and attack me. So first off, I'm gonna have to take out these little guys and then go for the big one making it a little bit harder, considering the fact they have to deal with multiple enemies. So it'll be an even matchup. The Bulborb larva, they hit hard, but I can literally just stomp on them and they'll die. The regular Bulborb is, he's pretty big. He's like three, four times the size of Olimar. And although he's slow and sluggish, he can swallow me whole. So as long as I stay out of that mouth, I can maybe manage to take him out, but I wouldn't even be able to kick down his legs because those legs probably weigh more than me. So if I play my cards right, I might be able to win, but I'm gonna put him in this section right here. The Bumbling Snitch Bug is difficult. I don't know how to fly, and this guy does, and he specifically picks you up and slams you on the ground. So I can dodge him all day and maybe grab his limbs when he tries to swoop in at me, but odds are he's gonna pick me up, throw me to the ground, and break a few of my bones until I am dead. The Burrowing Snagrit is another one of those grounded enemies, and he has the ability to pluck you out at lightning speed. I'm not gonna win this. I can't climb up his, his like snout trunk thing. He's just way too wide. And I'd have no way of taking him down unless his head gets stuck. Even then, even if I try to kick it, won't take enough damage to, to kill him. He'll pluck me out and I will die. The Calcified Crush Blast. Oh my God. I think that he's probably one of the most difficult enemies to take down as a human being. Even harder than the Armored Maudad, because I can at least run around and dodge him. And I might have a very slim chance of taking him out by like punching his eyes or something, but no. The Crush Blat is fully cemented in crystal. And even if I take out his legs, he'll just roll at me. It'll be like fighting the Beast Titan, just throwing rocks at me nonstop. And it'll only be a matter of time until I get crushed to my death. The Careening Digibug is a Napalm Bomber. He will drop bomb rocks on you 
as long as he wants, and he doesn't need to land at all. The only thing I can imagine is after that bomb explodes, I can maybe take some of the shrapnel and throw it at his balloons, pop them, and then use his bombs against him. But in the games, we don't have the ability to use any of his shrapnels, so he would kick my ass pretty damn hard. The cloaking bronet has a lot of end lag on his skewer attack, so if I can take advantage of that and like stomp on his on his like skewer, which shouldn't be that hard, it looks very thin. He won't have anything to attack me with, so I think I have a decent chance of winning. The Creeping Chrysanthemum is huge, and he is slow, so I could maneuver around him and try to take him out, but it'll be a battle of attrition, and I don't think I'd be able to win this. I'm going to put them in Might Lose, because I think I could manage to, like, I don't know, grab his eyes and, like, poke them out or something, but no, nah, I don't think I'd win this. The Crusted Rumpump. You do need a weight of 15 to take down his tail and actually take it down. And if I'm the same weight as Almar, which has a unit of one, I would not be able to take this guy down. He looks pretty armored up and I don't think I'd be able to win. So I am fucking dead. The decorated cannon beetle is an easy dub. It'll take some skill and some speed to crush him out, but that's my specialty. If Almar with a whole squad of Pikmin can outrun these following boulders, I can do the exact same thing. Just run the boulders into him and that's an easy game. The skitter leaves, again, easy dub. They're already just leaves. Oh no, what are they gonna do? Like, nip at my legs? Same with the flint beetles. The flint beetles are passive enemies. They'll be hard to catch. Like, they'll keep running around the place, but I'll, I will manage to catch them and take them out. Uh, the little fucking bird. The downy snagrit. I'm killing this thing. I'm going to rip its beak out, crush its legs, and just utterly destroy this thing. It has no match against me. It'll, like, Nip at my arm, worst case or like bite a finger off, but no, I'm winning this. It's an easy dub. The Frosty Ball Borb, on the other hand. I do live in Canada, so I am tolerant to the cold, but not this tolerant. So if I were to hit him, it would be pretty cold. So unless I go about kicking him with shoes, there's no other way I could really defeat him. I do think I might lose this though. I'm gonna put him around here. The Emperor Ball Blacks. See, we have no bomb rocks. And that scream will like break my eardrum, so I'm not winning this either. The Empress Ball Blacks. First off, she can spawn in a bunch of these little shits. So that's going to be one challenge to take out. Second off, she's just going to roll all over the place and I'd have no way of defeating her. I could maybe like shove one of these up her- Yeah, no, I'm not winning this. Sheer Grub will easily get squashed like a bug. There's no questions asked. If you somehow end up losing to this- Unsubscribe, please. There's no way even a fetus can defeat this thing. The fiery blowhog is pretty scary. However, if you stay behind him, you'll be able to take him out. That being said, fire does spread. So even if I get caught a little bit, I'm gonna have to pat that shit down quickly or else I'm catching on fire. The fiery ball blacks, on the other hand, is constantly on fire. And even if I, I lure him into a body of water, I still have to deal with this giant tightening snail thing. So yeah, no, I'm not winning this. The Flighty Joust Mite is another kind of difficult one. However, if I do what I did with this guy while he's in the air, as soon as he skewers the ground, I can snap off his, like, jousting thingy and take him out. Maybe snip off his wings and then just, like, pummel him down. I think with the right strategy, I could manage to beat him. But the fact that he's airborne makes it a little more difficult. I'm going to put him in between these two tiers, right at the bottom. The Fulix will sliver around, and I don't think he can really kill me. I'll like, get caught up in his goop, and it'll be kind of gross, but like, I just gotta yank his little nucleus thing out and stomp him out until he's dead. So, I think it'll be a pretty easy win for me. The Freeze Cake, the Shock Cake, and the other cakes, I don't know if I'd be able to win this. They're a giant pile of elemental rocks. So even putting the elemental part aside, I'm not really able to like, destroy rocks. The only way I could see them losing is like if I were to pull out their eyes and if that like kills their consciousness, but I'm not gonna assume that. So I think they would easily kick my ass. The Frosty Ball Borb is another elemental ball borb that I, as a human being, cannot physically deal with. And the Gatling Groink is even worse. He has a shield at the front of his head. He has bombs shooting out of his mouth. And even when I kill him, He'll end up regenerating. I don't know how I'd be able to stop that, but no, I'm not winning against the Gatling Groink. Maybe I can get him to explode himself like the Creating Digibug, but he might even be harder to defeat. 
Now, if I had a pickaxe, the Gildemander would be pretty easy to defeat. Just mine that gold and like make some golden apples or something like that. But being able to hammer down solid gold is going to be pretty difficult. I'm not really scared of that tongue. It's a very slow attack and I can just run away. But taking all those piles of gold off its body would be pretty difficult and time consuming. And I might get fatigued before I manage to do it all. So I'm going to put him in the might lose. The Gildeman, we on the other hand, I think would be an easy win. Not all the way up here, but it'll be pretty simple to destroy him. Just push that block of gold off his back and stomp him out. The jelly floats are enemies that I will not be able to take out unless I'm able to jump high enough and grab their little like tentacle thingies and drag them down. But if they inhale me, it's game over because they'll slowly, I'll slowly dissolve in their bellies and that's a very brutal way to go out. I'm going to put you here and the smaller jelly float, I might have a bit more of a chance. I'll put you up here. The groovy long legs. Now, unlike the beady long legs, I can't even climb up this thing because he's moving too fast. He has this poison like rave music going on. And although it'll be such a horrifying fight, at least I get to go out listening to some banger music. The grub trucker, I love this enemy. He's really cool, but let's be honest, he's gonna destroy me. I have no way of reaching up there. And those claws, just like the aristocrat offspring will snip me in half. And the fact that this guy has height above me as well it makes it even scarier i'm not winning this now the hairy ball borb is one ball borb that i actually think i might have an even matchup with granted he's very big but i can grab onto his hair and kind of like ride him like a horse and slowly take down his eyes with regular ball borb he's slippery i can't really latch onto anything but with this guy grab his hair and climb up he's slow enough for me to stay behind him and eventually climb onto his back and knock him out the hermit karamad is easy you just bait him out make him miss and then just stomp on his little ass thing until he he dies out the honey wisp will take eons to defeat because this thing always likes to disappear but eventually if i catch it off guard i will defeat him it'll be very annoying it'll be a very tedious process but i will still win the armored cannon beetle unlike the arctic cannon beetle the Armored Cannon Beetle, I actually gotta throw something into its little hole. And I don't have much or anything to throw, unless like, I throw a shoe. And if I miss both my shoes, I guess I can keep picking them up and throwing them, but I'm not gonna count that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to take out this guy, because even when I do, I'm gonna have to attack his back, and that thing's all like gross and slimy. Yeah, no, I'm not winning this. The Icy Bullhog is another airborne enemy that wields an elemental typing, so very easy. I'm not winning this. At all. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not winning this. The Jumbo Ball Borb, on the other hand, is easily going to kick my ass. He's, again, a little sluggish and slow, but the thing towers above you. It's like 20 feet. But bombs are a little more scary, so I'm going to put him in this tier. The Mama Shear Grub is a passive enemy, and it will take some time to defeat it, but I will emerge victorious eventually. I'm going to put them here just because it'll be a pain to take out. The Mammoth Snoot Whacker. I have no way to take this down. Even if I were to body check it as hard as I can, he would not move. So I'm helpless against this guy. He will destroy me. The Mamuta, for a, a kind of positive enemy in the game, the Mamuta is a very scary concept. He's a giant, hairy, whatever the hell this thing is that just like slams the ground and he moves pretty fast. So one slam like that and I'm getting a concussion or literally like burrowed into the ground, fucking dead. So the Mamuta, you will get the best of me. The man at legs. <laughs> um, I couldn't beat a human with a machine gun. I don't think I could beat a mecha spider with a machine gun. And I think he would destroy me over any other enemy on this list so far. So man at legs, congratulations. You can beat a human being. The master hop is enormous. And even if I manage to latch on when he goes into the air, as he slams to the ground, I'll get hit by the aftershock. And yeah, no, I'm not going to win this one either down here. The mini snoot whacker. I think if Ochi's strong enough to ram him, I might be able to like, like running ninja kick into him. But even then it'll be pretty difficult. But once I knock him down, he's helpless. So if I can, if I can find a way to tip the cow, I can do it. I'm going to put him at an, an even matchup. The mid tight is fucking gross and pretty ugly, honestly. And that'll just, that'll gross me out. But I still think that I can easily beat him. He's one of those passive enemies. The Toxic Ball Borb. If I were to touch this guy, I think I'd get poisoned. And although I'd beat him in a, in a straight out brawl, shortly after I'd probably die out. That being said, I still did win the fight. So I'm gonna give myself the slightest bit of an advantage. 
Same thing with the Moldy Slooch. I can manage to beat him out and kill him, but I'd get poisoned and I would die shortly after. He might be a little easier to beat than the Ball Warp though. Moss, I'm just gonna put this into perspective. If you got into a brawl with like a eight foot dog, do you think you'd be able to win? I don't think so. Moss's chomp is pretty hefty and considering the amount of like upgrades we can give her, I don't think I'd be able to win. But maybe I can like grab that tail and like cut it off. Then she loses oxygen or something. So I'm gonna put her in the might lose tier. The mucker skate is gross. He'll like shoot mud at me and it won't really do much else. It'll be more so of like a disgusting fight over anything, but I can manage to take him down relatively easily. I'd most probably win unless he manages to like drown me with his with his with his mud. The mysterious life form is a mysterious life form. So I wouldn't know how to defeat him, and even if I did, it would be very difficult. And he's not even in his final form yet, so I'm not going to even try to justify being how I'm gonna be able to beat this. I'm gonna put him right beside this guy because they're relatively like the same gooey weirdos. The Nectarius Dandefly is just like the Honey Wisp. It'll take some time to defeat. However, if I grab one of its tails, one of its little beads, I can drag it down to the ground and beat him up. So it's gonna be a little easier than the Honey Wisp. The Pearly Clam Clam will take some time to defeat, but as long as I'm consistent, as long as I play it safe, I'll be able to emerge victorious. The Peckish Aristocrab is just a bigger version of the Aristocrab offspring, and if I couldn't even beat this guy, I have no chance against this one. I'm getting snipped in half, and I am not winning this. The Fozbat will be annoying to beat, but he's similar to a Ball Borb in terms of fighting it. He's about the same size, and he has a big mouth, but as long as I stay aware, I can defeat him. I'm gonna put him Ball Warp tier. The Fozbat Pod, on the other hand, will keep spawning in more of these guys, and... It's gonna probably take a decent amount of hitting for it to, to wither away. So I'll probably have to fight off a couple more of these guys and then take this guy out. And these guys aren't easy to fight. It's gonna take some time. So I'm gonna say it's about even. The fact that I'm an even matchup to a fucking pod doesn't help my self-esteem, but there you go. The Piliated Snagrit is an even scarier version of the Burrowing Snagrit because I can't even defeat this guy, let alone one that moves around. He's faster. He can bite more, and he moves. So this guy will easily defeat me right under the Aristocrab. The Plasm Wraith is an ungodly being that uses every single element in the book. And I actually think that the Man of Legs will still be a little scarier because I, I know what a gun can do. I don't know what this thing can do. That being said, either way, I'm fucking dead. The Porquillion, it'll be a pretty tough battle. But as long as I take some time and just keep running in circles, letting those spikes land beside me, I can maybe grab those spikes off the ground and like try to stab his eyes out or something. There we go, he just gave me weapons. And since he equipped me with some weapons, I'm gonna put him up here. On to the water enemies. Now the Pluckering Bluno, very easy. Um, it'll take some time, but I'm gonna have to like wait for them to swim around. I'll jump from platform to platform and grab them and just leave them in the air. I'll let them suffocate. So this guy, I could defeat him. The Prickle Puff, on the other hand, will be a challenge. He's a lot bigger, so I can't really just like pick him up and I can't really swim. And I'm going to be forced to swim. So he's going to have a very good advantage over me. So considering the fact that I am not an aquatic animal and I am not the best swimmer, can't hold my breath under, under the water, I am probably going to lose to this guy. No, I am going to lose to this guy easily. The Puff Stool. Now, I don't know about the puff stool. If he were to poison me, would I turn into like a, a puff human? I'm gonna assume if he poisons me, I'm pretty much done. And he's pretty heavy, pretty difficult to take out. So I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and say the puff stool will defeat me. The puffy blowhog is another airborne enemy. However, they don't use any elemental typing. So I'm gonna put them at the bottom of the I'm fucking dead tier. The pyro, the, the pyro, the pyroclasmic, the pyroclasmic salute. The Slooch thingy. I'm not winning this. It's made of fire. It'll be like the fire ball blacks, but maybe if I stuff it with sand, like throw sand at it, the fire will go out and I might be able to take it out. So I'm going to put it right here. The Quigold Myroclops. And actually, you know what? I'm not winning this. This thing is fucking massive. It's the biggest enemy in all of Pikmin and there's no way you can defeat this. Even if there were like a hundred human beings versus one thing, I don't think we'd still end up winning. The Quigold Myroclops will destroy anything in its path. 
The Raging Long Legs is just like the Beating Long Legs, except I can't climb its leg, and it has these giant ass feet. However, its target is a lot easier to get, but I don't think I'd be able to take it out. So I'm gonna put him in this tier as well. Easier to kill, easier to get killed. The Raging Boyster will always be targeting me because it's a 1v1 and I can't really switch between captains and it's really hard to go around this massive thing. I think eventually he will be able to take me out. The Ravenous Whisker Pillar is a very easy enemy to defeat. They don't have much going for them. They're another passive enemy. I'm going to put him above the bread bug. So you just got to stomp on them and they go splat. The Spectralids are all very easy to take out other than the fact that they fly around. But like the Honey Wisp, you can manage to catch it because I've caught a few butterflies in my time. The Sand Belching Mirror Slug is a very difficult boss to defeat. I don't think I'd be able to fight it off. And if it trapped me in this little sand hole, I'm not winning this. So, congratulations, you beat a human. The Scornet Maestro. And actually, before we start talking about the Scornet Maestro, let's talk about the Scornet. The Scornet is just a little bee. If you've killed a bee before, you could probably beat this. It'll just be a little bigger, but that means it's easier to hit. The Scornet Maestro, on the other hand, can spawn in a bunch of little Scornets. But I do think I have a chance against these guys. If I can manage to take a couple of these guys down, I can throw them at the Scornet Maestro. And once it's on the ground, just stomp him out. It'll take some time, but I think I might be able to take him out. I'm going to call it an even matchup. Actually, you know what? I think I have the slight advantage here. The Segmenting Crobster is a very difficult one. When he gets in his ball and starts rolling around, I'm not going to be able to outrun that. And even if I do, he's going to summon rocks from the fucking sky and they'll fall on me. So this guy... It's like the Calisify Crushblat on steroids. I'm going to put him up here. The Shaggy Long Legs is, I think, the easiest Arachnorb to defeat because I can pull on his hair and swing around and it'll make it a little easier for me to defeat. That being said, it'll take some time before I knock his legs out. So I'm going to put him at the top of Might Lose tier. The Shear Flea will be easy to take out. Yes, it'll nip me a bit, but like, I'm going to win. And the same thing goes for the Shear Wig. Even though he can fly, it isn't that much of a challenge because when he swoops down, all you got to do is swat it like a fly and he is dead. The Skeeter Skate will be much easier to defeat than its mud counterpart because it only shoots water. And granted, the water could be in high pressure, but I think I'd be able to defeat it. The Scudder Chuck, very similar thing. If he misses his first attack, as long as I make sure he doesn't get to that rock, I can win. And I can also, if I'm strong enough, pick up that rock and smash him in. So, another easy dub here. Yeah, um... The Smoky Prog. I don't think I'm going to win against this alien frog thing that literally evaporates you if he hits you, if he touches you. I don't think I can even lay a finger on this guy. So I'm going to have to admit I'm fucking dead. Oh, I forgot some more ball borbs. There we go. And the snowflake, the snow fake flutter tail. If my arena has fire and I can manage to use that fire to like burn it, then yeah, I'll be able to take it out. But if there's no fire, I'm not going to win and I'm going to assume we're not fighting them with the fire. And even if there is, I'm not going to set myself on fire to win. So the Snowfake would most probably defeat me. The Arctic Blowhog, I think it's going to be an even matchup as well. Just like the Fiery Blowhog, as long as I stay behind him and take out his back and don't get hit by his frost attack, I'll be able to win. The Sovereign Ball Blacks is the Emperor Ball Blacks on steroids. And I actually think it'll be right up beside them. Not harder than the Ancient Sire Hound, but relatively difficult. The Ball Bear is just a stronger version of the Ball Borb, and I think I will lose this. It'll be at the bottom of the I'll lose this tier, because I'll use a similar strategy for these guys, but I'm probably not going to come out on top. The Spuddlefish is another fish-like enemy, and he'll, like, blow that weird gas on me, and I don't think I'd be able to really defeat him, but I think if I play my cards right, it could be an even matchup, but I'll probably end up losing in the end. The Startle Spore will give me a slightly tougher time than the Creeping Chrysanthemum, just because he has that poison ability. So I'm going to put him almost at the top of this tier. Actually, I'm going to move the Porcolian up here. I think I can beat him. The Sun Squish is an easy enemy to take out easily in this tier. And same with the Shar Swarming Shear Grub. The Swarming Shear Grub will take some time because there's quite a few of them, but I can still manage to defeat them out because they don't hurt me at all. I feel like the Swooping Snish Bug will work very similar to his Captain counterparts, but I don't have any Pikmin on me, so I don't know if he'll try to grab me. Granted, he seems a little easier to take down than... This guy, which I forget his name. So I'm going to put him up here. The Titan Dweevil, when armored up with Louis equipped as well, will be a very scary fight to, to go into. I don't think I'm going to end up winning like at all. Almost as, devi as devastating as the Man at Legs. But the elements, I can kind of dodge. A machine gun bullet, I can't. 
The Tox Stool, on the other hand, is a little more devastating than the Puff Stool because he has the ability to poison me. And like we said before, I can't even take it down, plus I'll probably die to poison. The Tusk Bohog is a very one directional enemy. If he charges at me and I dodge it, He's left open and I can take advantage of that. But if he ends up ramming me, I'm probably gonna get severely injured. That being said, I think I'm fast enough to dodge his stuff. So I'm gonna put him up around here. The Ujidani is a bunch of tiny little like ant things. And I think they're the smallest creatures in the game. So I will easily defeat them. Might be a little hard to catch, but I will stomp them out. The Behemoth Fozbat is massive and I don't think I'd be able to defeat him, but if we're in a Colosseum and it's sunny, I don't think he'd be able to live. So I think for this battle, we're going to have to be in a cave and I do not know how to wield electricity. So I can't really use his weakness to my advantage. That being said, I will die. The Volatile Dweevil with a fucking bomb rock equipped will be the easiest fight ever because all you got to do is just get close and run away as fast as I can and he'll kill himself. He'll literally just die. The Waddle Puss is easy. He'll blow bubbles at me and... I don't know, they might hurt a bit, but like, no, it's an easy win. He has no way of hurting me. The Waddle Quaff is like a Bog Swallow on legs, and that's going to be a little scary because he can chase me down and inhale me, but I think I might be able to clog his snout, and if I do, then it's GG. The Water Dumple is just a slower Ball Borb, and he's going to be on land for this fight, so I think it'll be an even fight because... He takes a little longer to chomp, but if he does manage to chomp me, it'll deal a devastating hit. The Water Wraith, I do not have Purple Pikmin, and he lives in a whole other dimension, so I have no way of defeating this guy. He's gonna be up here. The Watery Blowhog, I can fight off water. Granted, it'll be a lot of pressure, but if a bit of fire or ice gets on me, I'm gonna get burned or frozen. But if a bit of water gets on me, it'll hurt a bit. That's it. The whip tongue ball borb is scary because I can't even run away from this guy. His tongue will grab me like a frog, wrap me around and choke me out. I am not winning this at all. The wally hop and yellow wally hop, I think will be an even matchup because it'll be kind of easy to dodge their attacks. And when they're on the ground, I could maybe take advantage of them. It'll take some time, but if they land on me, I am going to get hit, making it a pretty fair fight. And the wog pole, the wog pole is pretty useless, even in the water. I just have to chase it down and get him. It'll take some time, but I don't plan on losing this fight. And the Pikmin captains. I will beat every single one of them, except maybe Ochi. All I gotta do, especially if they're fighting on Earth, which I'm pretty sure that's where this takes place. All I gotta do is break their helmets, smash it against the wall, or just even punch through it. And these guys are dead. These guys are losing their oxygen. Plus, they're in a giant hefty space suit. They can't really fight too well. This will just be a one-on-one -on -one brawl. And as a martial artist, I'm used to fighting people the same size as me. I'm not used to fighting a dog. Granted, this dog is a little smaller than Moss, but it's a little cuter. So I'm not going to want to fight it as much. So I'm going to put Ochi a little bit below Moss. Because I think Moss will put up a bit more of a fight. But that's the entire list. Every single enemy in Pikmin that I'd beat in the fight. I know this video is a lot longer and a lot less edited compared to the regular content I make. But if you watch the very end, thank you so much. I personally wouldn't have. I have a very low attention span. But if you made it to the very end, leave a comment down below saying pineapple. Just so I know you made it. But also let me know if this is the kind of content you enjoy. Would you rather see me do just tier lists and a lot more casual content? Or do you want the highly scripted, highly edited type of videos? Let me know in the comments. And also, what's the most impressive enemy you think you could beat in a fight? Personally, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I think I can defeat the Scornet Maestro, but I want to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks for watching the video, and if you really made it this far, here's a little secret. Next video is going to be a huge PicTuber collab, so look forward to this Saturday. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in a couple days.